Every data team, whether you work at a huge enterprise company or a small business, has to deal with source data. And source data typically isn't ready to be reported on. You have to do some sort of data transformation and add custom logic along the way. And while most pipelines will have multiple layers or hops, the most important step that I find often gets overlooked, oddly enough, is layer one. And the layer one is what I call staging. And you might hear this referred to as something else, but staging is the first layer that cleans up those source tables before it ever gets to anywhere else in your pipeline. And this is important to talk about because without this staging layer or something similar in place, you're leaving yourself exposed to potentially long-term issues with your data pipeline that otherwise could be resolved with just adding something upfront. So in this video, we're gonna talk about, of course, what is a staging layer? What am I talking about? And also three reasons why creating the staging layer is gonna help you build a much more reliable data pipeline for your team and for your business. All right, so what exactly am I talking about when I say staging layer? Here's a visual of something I've talked about in other videos, which I call the three layered approach. And when I say three layers, we're talking about one, two, three, staging warehouse smarts. Again, there's another video talking about all of these, but in this video, we're focused on staging. So if we zoom in a little closer here, we can see first up front, we have these, what I call the raw source tables. And this is gonna represent wherever you're loading your raw source data into, let's say a database, maybe it's file storage. I like to load it all into a, database, a cloud database server. So that's what these represent. And as an aside, I like to keep them separated by the source system, but that's up to you. Either way, this is the raw data that's unformatted, untouched. It's just dropped in here from the extraction tool. And so the goal of this staging layer, and again, we'll talk about the reasonings why this is helpful, but just to understand what this is, a staging layer is going to create a one-to-one -one view for every source table that you care about, that you're going to use in your data analytics side of things and store it in a separate spot. So for me, I like to create them in separate schemas, but this could be a database, whatever. And I call it staging. You might see other teams call it something else, but for the sake of this discussion, we're gonna call this the staging layer. So source data is landed here and I create one-to-one -one views on top of them. Now I wouldn't recommend creating this for every single table. I would just do it for the ones that you are actually using. So as you find yourself needing to use a source table, create a staging view on top of it. So what is this view? Well, it's one-to-one, -one, like we said, with each source table. You can generally think about it like a cleaned up version of that table, because again, it's not gonna be perfect coming straight from the source necessarily. For example, if you know you have numbers you want to round a certain way, you can handle that up here. Maybe you wanna rename your columns to consistently look the same way, like snake casing or camel case, whatever you choose. You could do some simple conditional statements to again, add some logic just for that table. The idea is you aren't doing any joins here yet. It's just one-to-one -one with the table and you're effectively creating a pre-written select statement on top of that source table. So every time you wanna use that source, rather than selecting straight from it, you instead select from that staging layer. So again, you're creating that cleaned up view on top of it. And the reason I keep saying view is I'm talking about a database object of a view as opposed to a table. Because with a table, you are also storing data, but with a view, it's only going to run a select statement when you query it. So with a view, you don't double up on that storage unnecessarily. That's the reason we do it that way. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the idea of staging. It's one-to-one -one with each source and the first layer before you move on. So let's now talk about some reasons why this is so helpful. So reason number one to create this staging layer is for modularity. And modularity is basically breaking things down to their most basic components so that you don't have to repeat yourself multiple times. Let's say, for example, you have one raw source table that gets used in 10 different queries or maybe 20. And in one of those columns, it gets converted to a decimal. Maybe it's converted to one decimal place. And to keep it consistent, you've made that change in all 10 or 20 different places for that one column. But then somebody comes back and says, hey, we actually want to make that two decimal places. You now have to go make that change in 10, 20, or however many different places you have this reference. Whereas if you've done this in a staging model, what you would instead do is do that one time in the staging layer, in that view, and pull from that view in those 10 or 20 different places. But if you need to make that change, instead of making it in all of the places, you only need to make that change once in the staging model, and it's gonna flow through because it's being referenced all from that same spot. So that's just one example, but imagine that for many different columns, for many different sources, and it can really start to add up in terms of your effectiveness as a team. And that's really where this idea of modularity comes into place. You're consolidating where that logic happens for things that are just related to the source that don't require joins in this case. So if, again, formatting, simple conditionals, renaming, things like that. If you can do it once, you're gonna save yourself down the line. And when we talk about this modularity thing, it makes sense, I think, when you explain it, and most people would agree, but again, this is something that I see so many teams miss because maybe the foresight wasn't there to create that layer, but that's why I wanted to make this video again to explain that this can really help you a lot by just setting that simple 
one-to-one -one layer up front before you do all of your other transformations so you're not repeating yourself so many different times. Now, point number two revolves around consistency and maintaining this consistency in your project. And this is similar to modularity. It's kind of a secondary benefit because in addition to not having to make changes in a bunch of places, you're also consolidating where that logic lives, meaning you have less opportunity for things to be conflicting. So if you have everybody individually writing those simple transformations in different places, you have to be very sure that you're updating them every single time and you're doing them the exact same way every time. Whereas if you have that staging layer, again, you're handling it up front and you can be sure that everywhere it's referenced, you know exactly where that logic lives and what it represents and what it's saying so that everywhere it's used, it's always gonna be the same. And if you ever need to make that change again, it's in one place and everywhere will stay the same wherever it's referenced. You can also use this as an area to establish some pretty good conventions for your data project. For example, how do you name this view? How do you name the database object? For me, I like to create all my staging models the same way. I start with a prefix of STG, one underscore, the name of the source, so maybe it's Google Sheets, two underscores, and then the name of the table. And this is something I didn't come up with myself. This is something the DBT community is kind of spearheaded, or at least that's where I first saw it. And I've adapted that into the way I build as well. And a lot of people might think that this is overly verbose and really long-winded for a name of a view in this case, but it also just makes sure that everything looks consistent because a lot of times developers will name things differently depending on their personal opinions or just what they think looks good. But if you have a staging layer and you say everything in this layer should be named this way, it keeps it consistent, cleaner to use, and more efficient to just go through the process of building your pipelines because you know exactly what you want to name it in that case, and everything will consistently look the same. And as a final point here, it's going to make it consistent for where you handle these source-centric transformations. And again, when I say that, I'm talking whatever's one-to-one -one with a particular table. You're not joining things here. So let's say in a later part of your pipeline, maybe it's in the warehouse or it's in the Marts layer somewhere, you find yourself doing some sort of transformation that is really only for a one particular table, it's not relying on any other joins, that's a clear sign that you can go back and look to add that in this staging layer for everybody else to use and then just reference it later. So it gives you a clear and consistent way to handle those types of things rather than having it pop up in all different places in different ways. It just keeps your workflow and your project and your expectations from the developers more consistent. Now point three I've already alluded to, which is clarity. And to me, having clarity with your data architecture and your data pipelines is arguably the most important thing above anything else. And in this particular case, having a clear staging layer that has consistent naming is gonna make it clear in terms of how you handle source data. So whether you're starting to work with a new table from an existing source, or you wanna add a brand new data source that has recently been added to the company, you have a very clear strategy for how to handle it. You create the staging layer, you create the views, you rename, and handle all this light transformations up front and use it accordingly. So just by seeing the name of this object referenced in the query, you immediately know three really important things. You know what type of object it is. You know it's a view because it's in the staging layer and you just should understand that that's what that represents. Number two, you'll know exactly which source it's coming from because of the way it's named and that includes the name of the source. And number three, you'll understand what type of transformations are in there. It's just a cleaned up version of that source table and you just know that immediately by looking at it, you don't have to guess, which is unfortunately very different than a lot of data pipelines where the naming is wildly inconsistent, where you might have to ask other people, read through the query or do your own digging just to figure out all of those things. Again, rather than just knowing instantly by looking at the name of it. And one final point is that establishing this type of layer and this type of convention, it gives you a place to act effectively as a starting point for your transformation side of your pipeline. So again, we're not talking about where the source data lands, we're talking about everything from there forward. And because of the nature of it being a view and a query, you can actually use it as a place to limit the type of data that gets passed through. So maybe there's some data that's test data or just bad data that you know nobody's ever gonna want, and no one's gonna use it, and it's actually wrong or something like that. If it's clear enough, you could just add that as part of the where clause and make sure it doesn't get returned in that query. So again, every time it's used later in your pipeline, you can be sure that it's not going to include those particular pieces of data because you've been explicit about it in that query. And that query is gonna be version controlled. It's all handled right up front in the staging layer and everybody knows exactly what's going on and how it's gonna flow through for the rest of the project. So the main takeaway here is that I recognize it's very tempting to want to just take your source data, start transforming it in a bunch of different ways and create reporting or analytics. But hopefully now you understand the value of creating that upfront staging layer or whatever you wanna call it for those benefits of having modularity, consistency and clarity in your pipeline so it can be more reliable and better for you and your whole company to use. So thanks as always for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you at the next video.